Hi, Rich Karuba for BowlingBall.com. We've got some more questions in part three of our series, BowlingBall.com Bowlversity Q&A, and this is the part three. Now, there's three questions. Let me get right to it. First, how can I prevent from uh, turning my ball too early? Well, there's several keys. One, you want to keep that arm in your palm of your hand, your elbow, uh, as close to your body as possible and facing your target at, on your forward swing. We don't need to rotate the whole arm to turn the ball. After your thumb exits the ball, if the fingers just make a, a quick rotation action, um, right-handers would be counterclockwise, left-handers clockwise. Uh, it doesn't take much of a turn to make the ball rev up and make the axis tilt so you can see a noticeable hook uh, as your ball travels down the lane. So the, the, some of the key tips is uh, keep the inside bone of your elbow close to your torso, uh, pointing towards your body on your forward swing as you enter the releasing zone. Uh, that'll keep from turning the whole arm. Uh, again, the elbow and the hand should be behind the bowling ball as long as possible. Wait for your thumb to exit before your fingers give it that quick, slight releasing action. That's all you really need to do to be effective. Um, you don't want to rotate the whole arm. Uh, that causes, uh, uh, if your elbow rotates outside of your bowling ball, that's what we call chicken winging, and that gives an ineffective release. You turn it early, you get poor results, you can't control your skid length, you can't get an effective roll on the ball. A lot of bad things happen when you release, try to release or turn the ball too soon. Uh, you want to practice. You want to train yourself staying behind the ball. It's not a natural motion. We want to turn our, our hands you know, and our arms face the uh, sides of our bodies when we just stand relaxing uh, naturally with our arms hanging by our sides. It's an unnatural motion to keep your uh, arm wide open and your hand wide open uh, to deliver a bowling ball properly. So it takes some work and some training. Um, so those are some of the tips that we think can help you. Uh, another one might be making sure you keep good gripping pressure on your fingers maybe a little more than on your thumb, uh, but a consistent grip pressure back and through as you release the bowling, uh, in, as you reach the release zone to deliver the ball. Uh, if you, uh, bowlers will actually grab at the ball. Bowlers who turn the ball early, they might have their hand very relaxed when they begin their swing, but at the top of the backswing and as they're coming into the release zone, they grab or squeeze the ball more, anticipating a powerful release or a, a decisive release, and that will make you turn your hand early. So you want to keep everything as uh, grip pressure consistent as possible till you get your hand into the release zone, the thumb exits the ball, and the fingers make a quick little rotation. Hope that helps. Uh, the next question is, uh, I've recently received, uh, or recently purchased, that is, a pair of new bowling shoes at BowlingBall.com, and I would like to know what's the best way to break them in. Well, there's several things you can do. Uh, you can wear your shoes around. You know, uh, wear them around the house, on the carpet, on the floor, anywhere where you don't get them moist or dirty uh, or food or gum or debris on them. And walk around in them till you break in the uppers and you get used to them enough uh, to where they're comfortable to wear. They don't bother the back of your heel or uh, the top of your, your foot or your toes or anything. And that's one way to do it. Another way is uh, you want to take several practice slides. Go bowl some practice games before putting them into use in competition. And make sure you practice sliding on all parts of the approach, the corners where you shoot your corner pin spares as well as the center of the approach, typically where you slide, uh, making your strike ball deliveries. Uh, you know, and, and, and that'll happen, that'll happen uh, uh, occasionally that you'll stick or you'll slip uh, unexpectedly. And you certainly don't want to happen and to have any surprises happen in competition. So get out on the practice lane, warm up slowly during your initial practice approaches. Uh, because your footwork will, uh, you'll stay more balanced, you won't be prone for injury. Make some slow releases. Uh, don't even try to make some full speed releases until you've really tested the shoes out and you're, you're confident that you can make a normal uh, approach and a smooth, even slide uh, and, uh, to deliver the bowling ball. And of course, stay off the concourse as much as possible when you're bowling. If you walk around, you're going to pick up dirt and debris and liquid, moisture, anything uh, when you're even just walking down to another area in the settee to visit friends bowling. So be careful where you walk because uh, that can cause you to uh, pick up some debris on the bottom of your shoe, as you know, and, and have an accident. And if you can't slide smoothly, there are substances you can buy, uh, products you can buy uh, to help you slide more smoothly, a little powder substance. Make sure if you get any of that, you just pat the bottom of your shoe uh, with a slight amount and make some practice slides before you take an approach 
you don't want to over uh, apply any smooth sliding substance to the bottom of your shoe because you might slip and fall and, and it could be dangerous. So uh, those are just some general tips. If you have interchangeable heels and soles, then you want to work with all the different combinations to make sure that anything you need in competition is ready to go when you need it. Uh, those are things to be aware of. I hope some of that helps you. Our third question this, uh, this time for this month is, uh, what are some tips to set up on the approach properly? I'm just learning the game and I seem uh, to get started inconsistently. Well, the setup is the most important thing to get you set up all through the approach. There's a, a simple theory by, uh, it's, it's proven, it's tested, it's a long time theory that you should almost assume your sliding and your release position to deliver the bowling ball get that posture set up in your uh, approach when you set up before you take your steps. So you don't have to really move your upper body uh, at all as you walk to the foul line, just your two legs and your bowling arms swinging. Keep it simple, the less moving parts, the less chance for error. So that means you want to flex your knees down one to three inches depending on what's comfortable so the big muscles of your leg come into play. They'll help you generate power so you don't need to force it with your upper body. Number two, Tilt your spine angle forward 10 to 15 degrees with your tail outward, back a little bit, and that will put you in an athletic posture. Uh, so your front parts of your shoulders are directly over your kneecaps and the toes of your bowling shoes, almost in a straight line, and that means all the weight of your body is balanced on your uh, flexed uh, knees over your legs, uh, so you'll be in a powerful athletic position and maintain that posture all the way as you walk to the foul line. Try not to bounce or... Uh, change elevations as you walk or drop or tilt your shoulders, any of that stuff. Um, but if you get a good setup on the approach uh, before you start, we recommend you hold the ball close to your body and in front of your bowling shoulder. The closer you hold it to your body, the less tension in your bowling arm to begin your swing. You'll get it started consistently and smoothly. But you should see a certified bowling instructor or your own personal bowling coach, possibly a pro shop professional, to help you if you have questions about how to begin your swing and how to walk and synchronize your swing and your footwork, you know, that's the, uh, the art of uh, attaining good bowling timing. Uh, and uh, bowling lessons, I can't advocate them enough. People don't nearly get tuned up or work with uh, successful coaches near enough to get the most out of their games, and we suggest you do. Sometimes a small investment pays off in dividends and bowling scores. I hope that helps. Thanks for checking in with us, and take a look next month for the next uh, in our series of uh, questions and answers in, here in Bullversity. Thank you.